Hello everybody, I hope you are having a fantastic day. This is my very first MSX computer and it's not just an MSX1 or an MSX2, it is an MSX2 Plus and this was only sold in Japan. Now I won't get into all the history of it, but essentially these computers, um, this platform I should say, was developed by Microsoft and ASCII and uh, the idea was it was kind of like the VHS where they said, hey, we're going to make the technology and whoever wants to make one of these things can make one. And essentially what they did was they came up and said, all right, in order to be an MSX, you have to have a Z80 processor. You have to have this amount of RAM and this kind of graphics and this kind of sound. And then the software will all be compatible. And then over time, they made a uh, an MSX2 and then they made this MSX2 Plus, which is a lot more limited. And then there was some other uh, MSX2 Plus Turbo, something like that, that they only made like two machines. Um, this has a little bit of damage. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but some of these old computers, uh, when the core gets up against the computer it sort of uh, stains the plastic although some of that looks like that's gonna come off which is good um, this one is also missing its floppy drive which is pretty sad and even more sad is it's missing the cable on the inside so I'm gonna have to do some work on that um, but ultimately I want to see if I can get this computer fired up and do something and uh, I think the way I'm gonna do that is by making a cartridge for this thing so let's give it a shot all right, so I am over here with the MSX Spider cartridge, as it's known. And uh, from a hardware perspective, this thing should be pretty simple. The software may be a little bit trickier, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, over here on the left, there are three places to put jumpers. And to be honest, with the uh, setup I have, I really only need this top one. So that's probably the only one I'll do, at least on this board. I'm going to make a couple of these up. Um, over here, you have a three position jumper where if you're going to have multiple games, you can move the position for that we'll talk about that later uh, we've got a 10k resistor and a 100 nanofarad capacitor that's labeled 104 if you've got these little ceramic capacitors here uh, we've got ourselves a 104 and uh, because this is an EEPROM we're going to uh, put a socket in here so that we can pull this and reprogram it should that be what we need to do so I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit of this chip quick flux stuff on here. I've grown to really like this stuff. Um, so while I'm doing this, I should mention that this video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. And this is more of a, an endorsement than a commercial. Um, you know, this board in particular, I bought out of my own pocket. Uh, what I've kind of figured out, just a little inside baseball, they will send me whatever PCBs I want. But uh, I'm a busy guy. I've got my own company and it's uh, life gets a bit crazy. And so rather than asking them to provide PCBs and then... Uh, although they're really patient, um, them wondering when I'm actually going to make a video on that. I've just kind of decided, you know, I order from them for work. Uh, I order from them all the time. So I'm just going to buy my own PCBs. And if I feel like making a video, I'll make a video. Or if a product that they use uh, helps me out, then it helps me out. And so uh, when I say that these things are you know kept alive by pcb way i'm not joking these computers that i have that you know this is really one of my very few hobbies um you know i come in here and i buy these things and they help me keep these things alive and i did just pause the video there because i realized that i did a soldering video and forgot uh to bring solder i don't actually solder at this desk uh this is just where i solder in videos um but it did give me the opportunity to grab this and not as a flex but i've got these uh final cartridges for the commodore 64 we've got one of these um eprom adapters we've got uh what is that i don't even know what that is we've got some uh uh epic fast load cartridges for the c64 there are coco video mods and all kinds of stuff that i just you know i bought out of my own pocket because i love working with this company and i love the fact that these projects that are available um, can help me save my hardware. And so, you know, yes, they sponsor the channel, but I only make videos when I find them truly useful. When you have your own company, it actually costs you money to make YouTube videos. So this is kind of a nice bonus that they're nice enough to sponsor the channel. And um, anyway, just continue my rant on them just a little bit. I bought, I think, seven or eight projects from them. Uh, for under $50 delivered. And so, you know, to get that big quantity of PCBs, um, you know, it's just awesome. And I do find it kind of relaxing to come over here, usually, and uh, 
and solder this kind of stuff and talk to you guys a little bit about what's going on in my life. And so I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video and I'll have a link to this project and some other shared projects in the description. Um, it's just really a joy to build these kind of things. So we are going to grab some headers here. And so I'm just going to my miscellaneous header bin here. And so we're going to get some straight headers and we're going to get some right angle headers. And uh, I'll go ahead, since I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and put all three of these in in case I decide to do something different later. But um, like I said, I really only need one of them. But we're going to get these three over here. And again, it is well, another peek behind the curtain. It is uh, 1 a.m. and I tend to get up at around 4 a.m. Uh, for work. So it has been a long day for me, but I'm just going to come over here and goof around and solder a little bit. So, I mean, why not? Oh, great. I flipped them all over. Um, so we're going to solder in these headers. I should use blue tack. I should use tape. I should be in bed, but instead I'm over here soldering PCBs. There we go. That was a better flip that time. So again, if, uh, if I was being thoughtful, I would have brought a breadboard or something over for that, but it's not going to happen right now. I just look for what... Great, my solder got stuck. I just look for whatever one is poking through all the way. We'll solder that side. And then we'll finish up the other one. Every once in a while, I'll get a comment that my channel would be a lot better if I were to... Uh, oh my gosh, that's terrible. <laughs> Every once in a while, I get a uh, a comment that my channel would be, you know, a lot better, bigger, more well received if it was uh, more focused or something like that. But man, I don't know if any of you have your own business, but it's a uh, it's a lot of work. And if I don't do the work, there's nobody's going to sit there and do it for me. So having to uh, to do all that kind of stuff, you know, these videos and these projects are just kind of a little bit of a hobby to me. This is not my end game. Um, Honestly, I do this stuff because it seems kind of weird to do all these cool things and to not really share them with anybody. And there's a couple of other freaks on the internet like me who find this stuff interesting. And so I make videos about whatever I find interesting. And if that's an Arduino, that's an Arduino. If it's a Raspberry Pi, it's a Raspberry Pi. If it's a rando retro computer from Japan, it's a rando retro computer from Japan. So... Anyway, my theory is always like, if you like the video that I put out that week or that month, watch it. If not, don't watch it. Um, so anyway, so we've got this three pin header and this is at an angle, I think because it would, in some of these MSXs would uh, interfere with the slot itself. This thing's actually kind of cool. It does have two card slots, cartridge slots, which is kind of nice. Um, I don't know exactly how one and two work at the same time. I'll have to learn about that. I've got a lot to learn about this computer. But, um, you know, there's one that sticks up in the top. And the one that sticks up in the top has a lot of um, shroud around it, which makes it where you don't have a ton of clearance to have jumpers sticking out of the top. Now, I know you may think my soldering iron isn't very hot, but it's at... 420 and it is ripping hot but i think all that was on a ground plane there and uh just we're sucking up a lot of heat so we've got the socket and we're gonna pop that in there flip that over and the most boring part which i'll probably skip ahead on is soldering these uh pin headers you always kind of do a couple of corners Make sure everything's sitting in there pretty. And then hit the middle. And there you have it. it only took a couple of minutes to solder and uh, we're ready to head over to the computer. All right, here we are over at the computer. And the first thing I noticed was that the repository came with a tool. And we're going to get into that in just a moment. But I did do some testing on the tool over at VirusTotal. And, you know, normally if it's just one or maybe two that say there's a problem with it, um, I don't usually think too much about that. But the fact that there's nine, um, now these, you know, in Bitdefender, you know, is one of the bigger ones of that saying that this is a Trojan. It's a little concerning. So um, what I did is I fired up a virtual machine and we'll play with this over there. All right. So there's one critical thing to understanding how this thing works. Whatever size EEPROM you put in the device, you want to fill it. 
And so um, you can have up to two games, but regardless, you want to fill the actual EEPROM. So we're gonna start off simply, and these two over here are 16K ROMs, but the EEPROM we're using is 64K. So in other words, it would have room to put these on there four times. So we're gonna fire up a program called BinWizard, and uh, we are going to add some files to it. And uh, so we're gonna take our 16K number one, and we're gonna put it in here, and then we're gonna add that same file again, um, and then that together will take up 32K of the 64K ROM. Then we're gonna add the second one in here twice, and uh, let's see, nope, not that one. We're gonna add Road Fighter in here twice. Now I've gotta hit down here, and we're gonna do it again, and then when you're done, you hit Merge, and that will make us a 16K by four ROM, which will be two 32K games. So we're just gonna say, uh, let's just say 16X2 like that, you know, just so that we know there's two 16K ROMs on that. Um, so then we have that bin file down here. Now the more complicated one actually comes with these 32K ROMs. And the issue with that is that for some reason, um, these things need to be swapped to where the upper 16K of the ROM file needs to become the lower 16K and the vice versa, which is a little weird. Um, and that's what this program is here to do. We could do that manually, but they're suggesting using this program probably because it's a Trojan. Um, we're gonna go ahead into our virtual machine and I'm just gonna copy this stuff into the C drive just to make it a little bit easier to deal with. Um, um, so we're going to copy this, this, and this into the C drive. And uh, I'm going to give this a shot. I haven't tried this off camera, uh, but we're going to go ahead and just, I should have checked that box. Um, so we're going to go in the, the C drive here and see if we can get this thing to run. So we're going to come down here to the command prompt and we're going to type in CMD and we'll go to C drive like that. And uh, now I think all we have to do is type in, let's see, did I move those or did I copy them? I still have the original, so I can jack this up. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in swap ROM and then uh, star soldier dot ROM. We're gonna see what happens. So it outputted a new file for us. It looks like everything works, so we're gonna do it again. Uh, swap ROM, uh, the thexter dot ROM file size okay so all right great so it looks like it made us two new roms that are slightly different now let's see where they're at refresh let's see where where did it put those things so while i was searching for that um i tried doing just seeing if there's a help file for it i also tried specifying what um where it was going to put that file none of that worked but what i did find is that it stored it in my app data uh, local virtual store folder. So that's interesting. So we're going to open up that uh, thing and they are both there. They are both still 32K. And so we're going to go ahead and copy those back to the desktop and see what happens. This is, I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen. So we're going to open up Bin Wizard here and we are going to add both of those files. Uh, so we'll add Star Soldier first and then we will add Thexter second. Uh, S to be Thexter, and if all goes well, then uh, 2x32. If all goes well, then this thing will work. If not, then I'll let you know what I found out. All right, so we are in the XG Pro software that comes with the T48 EEPROM programmer that I'm recommending to everybody right now. And uh, I have this thing set up as an ST, uh, and it's an M27C512 EEPROM 28 pin, just like the socket we soldered in. Uh, now, some of these I think that I've gotten from AliExpress are a bit bogus, so I can't guarantee this one's going to program, but we're going to give it a shot. Uh, we're going to load and then we're going to choose from our files. We are going to choose that 2x32 bin. I've brought it back over to my main PC and let's let her rip. And hit program and go. And I have the EEPROM in backwards. <laughs> So being the T48, this one's definitely slower than the T56 on some of these big, and I say big, 64K ROMs, but uh, it will get us there eventually. And there we go. We have a successful flash. 
All right, so we've got the MSX over here and I figured we'd take a look at the cartridge. Um, so the way it appears to work is that you can have, uh, this one should have two 16K games on it. And um, if you're using a 512K or 512 byte uh, EEPROM like I am, then you're gonna wanna put your jumper up here. Uh, I don't remember exactly which one, how that works. I think if you're using a smaller one down here, you can do that for like two 8K games or something like that. But um, then over here, you select which of the two games you wanna play, game one or game two. So um, I don't know why I stuck it on game two to begin with, but um, so we're gonna try this and see how it goes. Uh, I've never really done anything with the MSX. I don't know anything about the controls or anything. Uh, let's turn it on and see what happens. Oh yeah, I love that MSX screen. And it's got 512K RAM. Hey, that looks like a game. All right, we've got Konami. Remember the Konami code, up, down, up, down. All right, so uh, yeah, we've got Road Fighter, which is a 16K game. I hit the enter key, that seemed to work. What the heck is this? All right, and oh, nope, don't know what to do. I would guess these arrow keys would do something. Oh, okay. Let's see here, yellow and green. Whoa, they all took off like way without me. So what do I do here? Oh, space bar seems to be my throttle. And yeah, there we go, okay. So uh, I am way behind, oh, just, okay, sweet. We got, so we got Road Fighter up and running. Uh, let's turn this thing off and see what happens if I switch this jumper. I don't wanna drop it in the machine, but if I switch this jumper over to the other side let's see if we get a different game i think that's what should happen in theory oh, i knew i was gonna do that all right so i've got um one of these little jumpers with the little tab on there i feel like that's kind of the smarter way to do that uh well the smarter way is to remove it first so we're gonna put this on here there we go I'll plug the cartridge back in and see if we get something other than road flutter and contact Konami, is it different? All right, Antarctic Adventure, play select. Uh, so the one key, oh, we definitely don't want the joystick, so two key, maybe this two key. All right, so the Antarctic Adventure, that is the only continent on this earth that I have not been to. Yes, so you are a penguin that's trying to avoid, uh, avoid ice holes and things like that. Aren't we all trying to avoid ice holes if it comes down to it? Oh, got eaten by a seal. Um, so that is Antarctic Adventure and I love it. Um, now the other one, I think there's a very slim chance that this works, uh, but we're going to give it a shot. Um, so I've got, I'm going to put my single jumper on here. I probably should have just soldered a wire together. Um, and I think I've got some more of these tall jumpers somewhere around here. Look through my jumper collection. Uh, yep. Got another tall one right there. So we're going to put that on there and we're going to try a game one now these are uh these are 32k games which are a little trickier to get working so we'll see how that goes all right place your bets is the 32k cartridge gonna work well the machine turned on oh star soldier there we go we've got a 32k game working uh at least turning on so we'll see Stage one start. Got my little arrow keys going. Oh yeah, okay. All right, well that is a very uh, springy keyboard there. But heck yeah, that works. That's fantastic. I love it. All right, well now we gotta see if we're four for four. Uh, we're gonna turn this thing off and we are going to pull that cartridge. That was a little tighter. Um, pull the cartridge, switch the jumper, plug the thing back in and see if we get something different. Sexter, yes, four for four. Um, so I guess my take on it is, uh, I don't know about that software. I mean, I, you're probably fine running it. My guess is that it just does some things that the virus scanner isn't really used to seeing. So it's going to, um, you know, it's gonna throw off the throw off the virus scanner. Uh, calling it a Trojan seems a little suspect, um, but 
Anyway, so I am very happy to have these cartridges. I'd like to make a diagnostic cartridge for this thing and just to have a way to get some games up and running. So I want to thank you guys for watching and I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Have a great day.